What's up everybody? Welcome to today's live stream. Uh, we're back. <laughs> we missed it last week. I had so many things to catch up on and luckily I got caught up on them, but uh, we're back in action this week and we got some fun stuff to cast. Uh, so let me switch and show you. Oh man, so Frank cast all these good things. These are lifesavers that he made uh, some casting. These are, these are not real, do not eat them. <laughs> They're resin. Um, so lifesavers and he made these little twisty deals. And uh, he made the twisty deals out of these little pipe things. Little, uh, whatever you call them, cylinders. So we're gonna be casting all this stuff today. It should be, I think, pretty fun. So the game plan is for the twisty things, we're gonna put them in, uh, we're gonna, there's three of them. I'm gonna actually switch back to the overhead view. We're gonna cast them in this guy. Kind of hard to see a little bit, but, so we got three of them and we got three slots. So that's pretty sweet. And I was thinking for these lifesavers, let's drop them into these guys and make some uh, stoppers out of them. Um, you know, we can make pen blanks, but I was thinking that stoppers might be more fun because you can actually kind of see the, the, you know, the shapes of them. They would stay a little bit more intact. And, uh, you know, we can make a full handle, but that way we can kind of distribute them to the mystery box people. I don't think we're going to get 10 of the 10 of them out of these. Um, but I figured we could uh, see how much we can fill up and, and cast those. Now, here's the deal, though. I don't know what to do with these things. I didn't come up with any specific ideas. Um, now, one thing we can do is we can heat them up. These have been in the oven and you can twist them or you know do whatever you want with them um, and then try and kind of keep them in shape you know um, so we can do that uh, play with them that way or if you guys I mean another thing we can do is just toss them all in like a pen mold like a, a you know like a pipe and then we would get something kind of weird and, and interesting that way or if you guys have any other ideas you know we could go for like a larger blank possibly I don't I think these maybe this idea would be cool to, to, you know, put into like, I don't know, something larger at specific air, at specific angles and stuff. But I haven't, like, I think there'd be a lot of like, you'd have to set something up to do that correctly, you know? So let me know if you guys have any ideas in the comments and then super chatters. I, I don't know how, like the, the stoppers, I think we're going to go with clear. Um, that way we can see the lifesavers in there. Hopefully they won't like, yeah, they should be fine. I was going to say, hopefully they don't like, sometimes like clear transparent um, castings can kind of disappear on you when you cast them in clear, but I, I think we got enough color in these that they should be all right. The only ones that are maybe, may kind of disappear a little bit are these ones, but we'll come to that, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And then for these guys, I mean, there's a lot of color in them, but you know, I, we could do something different. So if you super chat, you will kind of have, let's, let's just do it this way. Um, uh, how are we going to do this? It's, it's really tough with super chats to figure some of these things out when there's very limited things that we can do. Um, <clears throat> hmm. I was going to say whoever the highest super chatter is, this would be, <laughs> you guys are going to be like, oh, this guy is playing us. Uh, but I mean, I'm trying to figure out a way to do this where it's kind of like, I don't know, fair ish. Uh, like the highest super chats could could you know say what like have the final decision on what we do with these things um, and then the second highest could do figure out what kind of color how we're going to deal with the the twists and then like i said i'm just going to go with clear on the lifesavers i don't know how that's going to work we'd have to have like a timer and i you know these things are so tough i don't know how to do it um <clears throat> how about we do it this way how about this we will give the super chatters the final say. So I'll just kind of utilize just super chat input to decide. Um, I'll pick, you know, whatever. Um, so you guys can maybe like, you know, team up a little bit and uh, come up with an idea or whatever. So we'll just do it that way because it's too too hard to figure out the, all this stuff. So anyway, guys, I hope you're all doing good today. Um, it's Wednesday. It's interesting because Wednesday is basically my Friday. Um, tomorrow I take I take Thursdays off. Um, mainly I, I started doing that mainly because it's the the slowest day on the the on the ski slopes, 
at the at the ski resorts. That's why I took it off on Thursday. So um, the funny thing is, I'm actually not going to the ski resort, even though we're getting dumped on up in the the mountains. We're supposed to get like I don't know feet of snow. I think overnight, like at the high elevations, we just got seven inches or so a few days ago. It's I mean we got snow, so I'm going in the back country though. All right, so let's see here. I saw somebody, Jim was talking about uh, uh, transfer, like a transfer paper type of a deal. That's smart, I like that idea. That's what you do when you don't have a laser. And let's see here. Yeah, colored lifesavers are good. You know what I really like are the gummy savers. Those, ooh, those are my. I like gummy anything pretty much. I'm just scrolling through, making sure I'm not missing anything. Let's see. Someone said, "Why not cut up, cut up the sticks, cast them in a block mold?" Um, the problem is there's really not enough. This is all we got, and I don't like. I mean, like a full block mold, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna really fit. Not gonna do it. We could kind of cut them up. The problem is I'd have to go and cut them. Um, we could kind of cut them up and like toss them into a smaller, like a single, or like even like really like a tube. Cutting little tiny things is not my favorite thing to do on the planet either though. Uh, let's see, Mark said, uh, let's see here. Stuck well on one of the block pin molds. Uh, unless you're talking stack well um i i don't know i kind of like the idea of just doing it that way i mean frankly we could just i mean i think that they would be pretty cool i don't think there would be a whole lot of difference putting them in a pipe you know i mean you'd actually just be kind of saving resin so and i think we could maybe get two out of these we could get two pen pen blanks out of these if we did a three quarter inch pipe so I think that would be the way that, I don't know. And then you would have some really interesting stuff when you cut into them. I don't know. The in, I guess the center would be kind of lame. It would, you're just wasting the, the center one on a, any of them for a pen. Yeah, diagonally would be kind of cool, but the prob, like I said, the problem is then I got to do a lot of cutting and messing around. And that's honestly, that's going to take that's going to be me pointing the camera that way, being on the other side of the shop and cutting for a while. It's not going to be very exciting. <laughs> Clear with a tiny bit of sparkle. That's not too bad. Let's see here. Yeah, definitely a little bit of starlight. Definitely. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, yeah, gummy savers, I'm telling you, <laughs> Tim, they're the best. I need to take, I don't do any hunting, really. I used to a little bit, but uh, the problem is, like all my friends did up here, you know, um, duck and goose hunting and deer hunting, but, I, you know, it's so much easier just to go down to the market <laughs> and just pay for meat. Do the tubes, says Jen. I kind of like the tubes idea. I think that that's a good way to go. Jamie Page, what's up, dude? We need to get a, a, a thing going with me, you, and uh, and Jake. I, I, I already sent a message to Jake, and he's like, oh, I'll get a hold of Jamie. And I haven't heard back from Jake, <laughs> so we need to do that. So um, just, I know we're taking a little bit of time here, but Jamie, we need to know what would, because like we can pretty much do it any time of day for either of us. Um, what's a good time for you, for your schedule? Because it is like a different slight, uh, like you're, is it like five hours later there? Is that somewhere around there, six maybe? Use a straw for the center. I don't know if I have any straws. Let's see. You know, that's funny. I don't have straws in the shop, I don't think. Because I've never actually done, done casting like that, you know, in like these little pipe things. Straw, huh. I don't have a straw, guys. I don't know if I have anything that's like that. Um, hmm. 
I got things, <laughs> but I don't know if I have any straws. That would be a, a pencil might uh, sort of work. Cut the metal eraser off. All we need to do is keep them separated. So I, I could probably just get away with, I, you know what I could do is probably cut one of them. And we'll have to kind of see how many fit in a tube. One, one thing I can do is if I just cut a little bit off of these things, I can probably just kind of stick that in the middle and, and it should keep everything separated. That might not be a bad idea. Uh, so by the way, Jamie, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it, brother. They go in a tube and twist. Yeah, we could probably twist them in a tube. We are, we're already going to cast the twisty ones, though. So I don't know if that's really doing a whole lot of different, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Do whatever Jen wants. <laughs> nice. Eight hours ahead. Oh, man, okay. So maybe more in the morning here a little bit. I'll talk to, I'll, I'll shoot Jake a message, see if maybe like 11 a.m. for us or, or so and see where, where that falls for you. You did, thank you, Mark, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining the Patreon fam. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just scrolling here. Yeah, I don't really have any dowels. And the other problem with wood stuff is that can kind of react with resins. So uh, I, sometimes I shy away from wood. I need to turn the volume down. There we go. 11.15 PM. It's early. <laughs> nice. Color. Actually, I do have a colored pencil. I have a colored pencil or two. Where are they? Hmm. I think I do. Brilliant idea. We need to do colored pencils. Maybe we'll do that next week. That'd be kind of fun. I haven't done that for a long time. Hold on, guys. Let me get a colored pencil out. That's brilliant. I mean, I kind of mentioned the pencil thing, but uh, I was thinking like a regular pencil. Oh, where are they? I know I have some somewhere. I have quite a few actually. Maybe it's in the, maybe it's in the next tub down. Uh, ah! And I should probably look at these things sometimes. We got, we got all kinds of stuff in here. Okay, we're gonna toss a colored pencil now. It's the same thing, I mean, it's still wood, but I'm gonna toss this in the oven so I think we should be able to get two. I'm gonna to toss these in the oven just to try and suck out as much moisture as I can out of these things. Um, but I, real quick before we start, I want to, you'll be in bed well before 11, yeah. I usually go to bed pretty late. Oh, that's the volume. Turn that down, okay. Colored pencils are classic. I love them. You know what I really want to find though is the hexagon ones. That would be really, I haven't found those yet. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, P-Town Subby Mold. Surround the tube. Uh, surround the tube. I'm not sure what we're talking about here with the tube. P-Town Subby. Oh man, you know what I was, <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking we could maybe string these together. They're just too, just a little bit too big to fit in the lifesaver hole, darn it. Anyway, what I wanted to show you guys real quick, I don't think I'm missing, no clue. I know sometimes it's hard to figure out what to do with stuff. So anyway, I had these in the oven and my oven set at, let's see, let me look at the, the doohickey here. Not burning myself. So it's at about 150 Fahrenheit. And that gives you enough 
to be able to bend these things, you know? So um, I'm not sure, I'm guessing that might be what Frank did with these ones, just kind of twisted them about. Um, I mean, eventually they'll break, you know, you, you can only go so far, but you know, I mean, we can, with enough heat, you can kind of get it bent pretty well. I don't know what resin he used on these either. I don't think he's here today. Um, and in some cases you may actually have to like, you know, pull out, um, you know, like pliers and stuff to kind of get these to bend. And you only have so long um, for them to, you know, you only have like so long for it. Uh, there's only so much time before it like cools off and you really can't bend it anymore, you know. Um, but once it kind of cools off, it'll stay in place. So that's kind of a neat thing that you can do with resin. And this works with any kind of resin. Um, you just, you know, some may be a little bit more resistant to heat. Um, and you'll have to kind of play with the settings and all that stuff. But I've found for Alumalite Clear, for most epoxies that I've used, um, that 150, that's, and that's just what I keep my oven at, the temperature, um, for my molds. Um, what I'm trying to do is usually the, for how long I leave them in there, having the oven at 150 gives me enough time to, for, it to, for most of the molds to get to about 130. Uh, that's what I'm really kind of shooting for is about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. But um, for silicone molds, you know, leaving them in there, and I, I try to leave them in there as long as I can for silicone, um, 150 is fine for, for any kind of mold. Um, but like I said, for HDPE molds, um, I'm usually trying to get them to around 130, um, somewhere around there. And so just keeping the oven at 150, by the time, like, like what I can do is kind of pop them in the, in the oven before I start casting. And then by the time I'm ready to pour, then I can take it out and it's usually around 130, you know, somewhere between 130 and 150. So, the little sparkle, nice, okay. The everlasting gobstopper, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other ways that we could, um, I, I, I do like the idea of doing the diagonal thing. That, that's pretty cool, but I don't really have a mold that's going to work. And you got to do a lot of cutting and prepping for that kind of thing. And I just, it's going to be not very fun for the stream, I don't think. We'll do that on another one. Um, we can do that with the pencils, too. Oh, pencil, sh that's not too bad an idea, Kim. Huh. I don't really have a pencil sharpener. <laughs> that is a good idea, though. Huh. I wonder how that would work. I mean, I kind of have one, but it's like full of shavings right now. I'm just kind of curious how this would work. And I did see a couple of super chats come in, so. Let me see what happens here. Sorry, my pencil sharpener is like on the other side of everything. I'm gonna find a new size. It's not pencil sized. Well, it kind of works. Definitely doesn't work as good as a pencil. kind of works. I don't think it'd be very cool though. Here's what I got. Oh. Switch to the Sony cam here. That's what I got. There's like <laughs> there's like lead stuff in there and wood. But they're really small. Like you'd have to be sitting there for days. But I did sharpen it. That's a good idea. I just I don't know that that's really going to work too well. I don't, I don't think you're really going to see the shavings in the end, you know? And it kind of gunks your pencil sharpener up, just, just to let everybody know. <laughs> okay, so let's just go with the tube, I think. I think I like the tube idea. I like a little bit of sparkle. So let's see here. You got a pencil sharpener that goes in the lathe? That's sweet. Nice. Okay, so let's see here. We had Mark, 
Dave and Stefan and Steve plus Jamie all with super chats I appreciate it guys thank you for supporting the show okay so here's the deal let's uh let's start with the I got the mold ready to go um let's start with the the twisty ones in that that HDPE mold um, we'll go with that one. Then we'll go to the life or the yeah the lifesaver. I was gonna say <laughs> I was thinking gummy. We'll go with the lifesavers in the for like stopper type size, and then we'll do the the kind of twists. Um, and that what that'll do is doing those last. That'll let those pencils um, kind of heat up, and and hopefully we'll try and suck as much moisture out. What I would usually do is leave those things in for like hours to try and get you know all the moisture out um, if anybody does um, pencils colored pencil blanks definitely put them in the oven beforehand because it, it especially like if you're using a lumalite clear slow or a, any urethane resin um, there's going to be probably like, well especially if you're not in i'm in a dry climate and and it there was white you know hazy stuff going on um, and i've had bubbles on on certain things so really you, you really want to go with you know heating them up and and like probably putting them in an oven for like at like i mean the the tough thing is you gotta you you kind of need to keep it at a lower temperature so i'd probably just do like 150 and leave it in for a lot longer um than than you normally would you don't want to go like 220 um that's what i would do for for getting moisture out of just wood before stabilizing or casting problem is you're going to probably kind of melt and, and de i think you i i think i tried this and it kind of messed up the the color um like the the lead kind of melted a little bit maybe and even the outside kind of bubbled so i would recommend doing it like 150 and then leave it in for quite a while and just try and suck as much moisture out as possible if you live in florida or somewhere where it's humid um florida is always just my first <laughs> thought uh, for humidity um if you live somewhere humid, then there's going to be moisture in, in the pencils and you need to dry them out for sure. Absolutely. I don't care if you're using epoxy or urethanes or anything like that. Hey, there's Frank. So I'm, I'm curious, what, uh, what resin did you use for these? Um, I, I don't think you told me. I'd, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Okay, so let's get this rolling. We're going to do the, the twisties first. And I think... Um, we're gonna go with I think we'll just add a little bit of um, well so <clears throat> let's see I don't know how to do this yeah I don't I think we're gonna have to go with clear resin we can add a little bit of sparkle so I, I think the theme is we kind of want to go with a little bit of sparkle in there probably on all of these um, and then and then just uh, with clear I, it just kind of seems to make the most sense I think there's already enough color in there so you know we could maybe add like a metallic like a silver <clears throat> I don't know I don't exactly know ah glue yeah that's true very true very true Okay, so let's let's get these twists going. We're gonna do a little bit of clear. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, sparkly, sparkly goody. Switch to the Sony cam. I actually forgot to set up the other camera, but I'm kind of wanting to get away from that because it really makes things difficult when I'm doing the editing. So I think we're just gonna go with one camera. Let me get my watch off. I don't want resin on my Apple watch. That would ruin my day. Get some gloves on, get these boxes put away. Man, I got stuff everywhere. Jeez. Okay. I think we're ready to go now, guys. Oh, I lost my mic. Hold my mic out. Hold on. It's probably going to be loud. Just scuffling around. Okay, I think we're back. <laughs> Was it scuffling? Is that a word? Scuffling? Uh oh, I lost my. I'm all out of swords today, guys. Set up the wrong stream. Back is hurting. 
but we're going to push on. Okay, so I'm going to go and spray this, the, both of these. I don't know how many we're going to get out of this. It might only be, actually be one, um, but I'm going to go spray these with stoner, mold release. Stoner is the brand. We're going to use a little bit of stoner on 420. That makes, that's perfect. Got to use the stoner on 420, right? So, <laughs> so just in case somebody doesn't understand what we're talking about here. Stoner is the, the brand name of this mold release. Sponsored by. Okay. I thought it was actually kind of funny that we were talking about hemp wood too on the other stream. <laughs> okay. And I've already sprayed that, uh, that other mold. The, the HDPE mold is already sprayed. I don't think we're going to get a third tube out of these things. I don't even know if we're going to get two. So we got two molds ready. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Get these. Let's see, what are we doing? We're doing the twisties first. So I'm going to put these guys back in the bag and then just kind of dump them out when we're ready for that. Okay. That's done. And let's see here. Let me just let me just get configured a little bit over here, guys. I moved a bunch of stuff. Okay. Gloves on. Alumilite slow, nice. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, did you just use straws for these? It's kind of what I'm guessing. <laughs> Stoner for 420, I'm telling you. It's just perfect. You know? No accidental snacking. We got the munchies. I try not to use too much stoner because it gives me the munchies. <laughs> Just a moderate amount. Okay, so let's see. Um, this mold is, uh, I should have put a link, I didn't think about it. So this is one of the molds that, that Turner's Warehouse is the Maker Select brand. And it, they have these little, if you haven't seen these, they have these little plugs in them. And it's really fun because when you're demolding them, you just take the plug out, grab an air hose, and they go flying out, and it's really fun. Um, but they're seven eighths by seven eighths by about five and a quarter or so, I want to say, something like that. But I think they hold about. Now we're going to be filling them up with a lot of stuff, but generally, if you're just filling them with resin, I usually estimate about seventy-five grams, seventy to seventy-five, somewhere around there. Um, so for these, I mean, we're we're going to be taking up a ton of space, so I don't think we need a whole lot of resin. But I'd rather be over than under. So let's go with like, I don't know. Let's just mix up two hundred grams. Uh, and just, I, I think we're going to be way over, but like I said, I'd rather be over than under. Oh, and by the way, guys, I already filled up a, a fun cup. Look at that. Got all kinds of, there's, there, this is fun in a cup. So I got to get a new one out. <clears throat> Here's my fun cup. So we may be starting the fun leftover pour cup, um, with some clear. Okay, so I've zeroed the scale out. We're gonna, man, I, I, I put new uh, pumps on. On the, oh, you can't see them. I put new pumps on the, the Alumilite jugs and they are terrible, oh my God. They, they like leak, you like pump it and then it, and then it just continues dribbling out and I'm like, ugh. So I got some, some of the normal ones coming soon. So we're doing 100 grams, usually I, I take notes I don't think we need to, we're just making clear. So we're gonna go for uh, 200 grams. So 100 grams of part A. Messy. So 100 grams. Let's see here. Yeah, stoner works on anything. You can you can use it as a mold release on any material. Um, works great on on um, silicone. I to be I gotta be honest. I don't usually use mold release too often on silicone molds. It just uh, alumilite clear urethanes don't stick. 
They're not as um, aggressive. I, I don't know. They, they're not as hard on molds. That's a better word. And that's what I use the most is Alumalite Clear Slow, which is a urethane resin. Um, epoxies are a little bit tougher on your silicone molds. So, you know, using mold release will kind of extend the life. But I just, I haven't, I haven't wrecked. <laughs> as long as you're using like a platinum cure or, or a platinum, yeah, platinum cure, um, oh, 102. So we're going to go with 103, uh, 100, uh, 102 with the part B. Um, if you're using the Platinum Cure silicone, um, it, they usually last quite a while, even with epoxies, but I don't know. I don't, I don't usually use it on those. Uh, let's see, so 102. Um, oh, so if you're talking about making silicone molds, that is not, you don't want to, you don't want to use that. If you're talking about like, you know, I've made a silicone mold and I'm going to pour resin in it, then you can use mold release on that. You don't want, it's not a silicone to silicone release though. Um, if you're doing that, you can use universal mold release. If you're, you know, Alumalite sells it and there's also... Um, there's also other ones out there on the market. I think one's called Ease Release, which sounds kind of like a, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't like that name either, but, um, yeah. So just, just make sure that you're using, if you're making a silicone mold, like a two piece silicone mold, that's a totally different story. Stoner will not work for that. I was, I was thinking casting, so I just want to make sure. Uh, poured resin in the originals and then poured mold rubber. Oh, no. Okay, so you did that. 12 at a time. That's pretty sweet. How is it on metal? Uh, yeah, it, it should work on metal. I mean, all it's doing is just laying down a slick coating, basically that will not react with the resin. So, I mean, any, any, anything, you know, any type of uh, uh, mold material you can use mold release on. Okay, so we got a little bit, I, you might have noticed uh, if you were watching the scale, I usually add a little bit of extra part B when I'm doing dead clear with the Lumalite Clear Slow. If I'm pouring like a, a clear casting. Um, sometimes, b because the Lumalite Clear Slow and this is very specific to clear slow, okay? Um, not amazing clear cast or any of those other ones. It's this, this specific resin. Um, and, and, and you only want to do this with this resin, N no other ones. Definitely not an epoxy uh, based product. Uh, but because Alumalite Clear Slow, it was developed to be poured in very large masses, um, volumes. And uh, sometimes it can, you know, especially in this case, we're, we're pouring a very thin amount. Sometimes you can get blushing, which is like a white haziness in the resin. And I've found that if you add a little bit extra part B when you're doing these types of things, that it can really help with the blushing. Moisture can cause that too, but in this case, it's just because what's happening is the resin is able to be poured in very large quantities, you know, volumes, masses because it has a lower exotherm temperature. You know, it, it doesn't heat up as much as other resins. And so that's why, you know, with your, your just like standard typical epoxies and other resins, um, you, you're limited in, as to how big of a thing you can pour all at once. Um, but Alumalite Clear Slow, it's one of its nice benefits is you can pour a ton of it and it's, it doesn't overheat. The problem is if you're pouring thinner things, smaller amounts, and, and in some cases clear, but you know, smaller amounts, it doesn't have enough, it doesn't heat up enough, basically. It'll fully cure still, but it, it, it can cause that blushing. So I just kind of want to warn you guys about that. And what I do is I'll just add, you know, like, you know, 1% more B or so. Just a little extra and it seems to help. Okay, so we got our clear. 
Um, I'm going to go with, I love micro starlight. This is my favorite. So, oh, I almost forgot, guys. I got links to share. Oh, man. We're having a sale on my website. If anybody wants pine cone blanks, we're having a sale, guys, on the pine cone blanks. I don't even know how much they are. Oh, when we need the code. Shoot, what is the code? Spring sale. I gotta open my email because I don't even know <laughs> what's going on. Oh man. Oh geez. Hold on. Make sure you're signed up to my email newsletter so that you get no notified right away when these fun things happen. So let's see here. So the, uh, yeah, spring sale, 15% off guys. Okay, so, okay, this is just crazy. So, okay, so this is the code. And then this is, here's just a link to my, my pine cone blanks. Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a little bit of a sale. Spring's coming. So you just go there and then, you know, when you're checking out, type in spring sale and you get 15% off the pine cone blanks. How exciting is that? Um, but what I was going to show you guys is also, I'm just shamelessly plugging everything right here um we're going to be using a product called micro starlight glitter and i sell this stuff on my website should have done a sale on this too but i, I don't have time to right now so anyway micro star starlight um i love this stuff it, it's just like the super fine holographic particles it is the best one that i found that's why i this is one of those things that when i found it i loved it and I was like, I'm just going to buy it in quantities <laughs> and we are going to sell it. So in this case, a lot of times if you're doing something larger, I do, you only need a tiny bit. Like, like I would just kind of tap this on the cup and that would be, that would be it. But in this case, we want to add a little bit more because it's going to be kind of, you know, smaller around these little twisty things. So I want to add a little bit more, not that much though. That's the beauty of it. You don't need a lot, just a little bit, you know, like a little... That's about all I did. Um, but this stuff is available. And I also have another uh, Starlight, the regular Starlight glitter. It's the Chonky. That stuff's fun, too. We could add a little bit of Starlight to this, too, and see what happens. This stuff's chonkier. Oh, it's shaking my camera. I love this stuff, too. Let's, let's add both. Why not? I mean, you know, I'm going to go for a little bit of a bigger scoop of this stuff bomb Woo. so both of these guys are available on my website and they're fun i like to use these to make um aurora effects or nebulous effects but it's fun glitter i mean everybody loves glitter right boom yeah sparklies Okay, so we got that. So this is a pretty simple, uh, you know, there's not a lot going on here. We're going to dump some clear in. <laughs> you don't need to be a resin casting expert to do this, which is good. All right, so I got to be careful because I actually somehow took apart one of these twisty things. And it's a good thing, Frank, that you made these the perfect size because... Otherwise, we would have been in trouble. So that one, I somehow came apart. I don't know what I did. I picked it up, and every all the little twists like came out, and I was like, "Oh man!" It took me like 20 minutes to figure out how to put it back together. So be careful with your twists. Okay, so they're ready to go. They're uh, yeah, we didn't heat them up or anything. Now, one thing I do want to say, and I, I think I mentioned this earlier. I might have mentioned it on the other stream. These are pretty smooth, and so we may run into some issues. Um, what I would do, um, and, and uh, just to let you know, if you want to make something like this and, and cast these, what I would do is is make masters, kind of like Frank was saying that he, he you know he made the masters with um, just straws. What I would do is you know make if you wanted to make a big mold of them, make ten of them, but I would scuff them before you make the silicone mold 
that would ensure that you don't have any bonding issues between this resin that I'm about to pour now and those, those twisty things. Um, resins do not stick to smooth things very well. Um, the, you know, the bond between the you know, resin and, and other stuff, it, it's a mechanical bond which needs what they call tooth. So that's why you scuff things up with sandpaper or whatever. And rough surfaces, resins, you know, just grab onto. And so resins stick really well to wood because of that wood grain. You know, you got like divots and bumps and it can kind of grab on there. Smooth stuff, doesn't really like. It just kind of slides off. But I'm hoping that we'll be okay with these. You know, it's one of those things if we just kind of turn these slowly... Um, now it's going to stick. The problem that we're having is these are going to be turning blanks. And so, you know, if, if all you're doing is like, you know, recasting something, but you're not like machining it and especially turning it, um, like you could sand things. That's not too bad for like knife, you know, knife people that make knife scales, they can get away with a little bit more with materials, not having to worry about them coming apart. But when you're spinning something thousands of RPMs, you know, per, per minute, and then you're jamming a chisel into it, that's where you kind of run into some problems. And things can kind of come apart because of the forces that are being applied. Well, it's a good thing that I, I mixed up the amount of resin that I did. Because that was about perfect. I was seriously thinking about doing like maybe only 100 or 150. Okay, so we got those filled. I got a little bit of sparkly left, so we're going we're gonna to start our, our overpour. I guess I could just leave it in this one. Well, just in case there's any funky resin left over, I'm just going to pour it into a new cup. Any unmixed stuff on the sides or whatever. That'll be our overpour. I'm just going to move that over. And so we're going to toss this guy in the pressure pot. I know that you can't see me. I forgot to set the other camera up, but we're putting it in the pressure pot. Right over here. Did you guys hear Turner's Warehouse has the California Air Tools two and a half gallon resin casting open the box and it's ready um, pressure pots now. I, uh, and I forget who told me about it. Somebody emailed me and was like, hey, California Air Tools does have a two and a half gallon casting pot. And I was like, no way. And so I shared that information with Chad and I think that they actually already have those in stock. So, and I, I'm actually working with Chad. I'm hoping to get one of those because I'm, I'm curious to, to try it out. It's one, it is what I would recommend most people buy. Um, if you're super strapped on cash, then the Harbor Freight will do. I think it's the worst pressure pot on the planet though. So, <laughs> so if you can you know, float the bill, I would recommend getting the California Air Tools two and a half. If, if all you need is a smaller form factor, um, and then California Air Tools 5-gallon is the other way to go if you need something for larger things. I just, the thing is, for most people, and for most of what I do, I don't need a 5-gallon pot. That thing just sits back in that corner most of the time. Um, the 2.5-gallon pots, for most things that you make, are perfect. And so you're saving a little bit of money compared to that 5-gallon. I think it's like 220. I got to get a link to that, actually, right now, because I'm... I'm genuinely like ecstatic that they have these now uh there it is two and a half 219 guys i mean it ain't cheap still but it's a lot cheaper than the th the five gallon was i love it i love it so let me get a link for you guys because it, i'm telling it is a seriously awesome day i've been wishing somebody would come out with one of these for so long yeah, he, 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 if you guys are signed up for the Turner's Warehouse, um, is that the, did I do the right one? Yeah. I don't know if I did the right one. That's an affiliate linked one. I'm an affiliate for Turner's Warehouse too, but I'm, I'm genuinely ecstatic about this pressure pot. So just wanted to let you guys know. Okay, so Jacob's here. Where? Nice. What's up, man? Sweet. Okay, so I'm just scrolling down, scrolling down. 
<laughs> That's why I'm so attractive, a bit rough around the edges. Good one. I like it. Uh, okay, 219. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, nine, see, and that's one of the differences. A lot of people, like, I, I do, if I had my choice, and I do, I did, you know, I really like the CA Technologies pots. They're slightly different. They're, they're a little bit wider. Um, and so I kind of like them a little bit better, but I got to be honest, guys, these things are so expensive at this point that, and there's good viable options out there. Um, that I don't think if I were doing starting up my resin casting pen blank business now, I wouldn't buy CA Technologies pots probably because I want to say these things are $400. I mean, literally twice as much. It might be $450. Um, so twice as much. I do think they're a better pot. I mean, they're a little bit better. Um, and I do like the dimensions and the bottom's flat, uh, fairly flat. Um, there's, there's a couple of advantages to these, but good Lord, for $400, like... 219 awesome you know and it's a good pretty good pot so i'm very excited i think it's just it's good for the for the resin casting community you know to have that as soon as fuel prices i know are they ever going to come down <sighs> it's getting crazy okay so we did the first one we got those guys ready and so these guys are going to go into the mystery boxes i know that there's not going to be 10 of them um, but we're, we'll divvy things up and, and, you know, some people, we may have to do kind of a lottery to see who gets them, but um, we'll try and get as many of these fun things into the mix, mystery boxes for you guys. So number two, we're going to do the, the life savers in, we're going to make bottle stoppers out of them. Um, so let's switch to the, the casting view overhead thing. I don't know how many we're going to get. We're going to find out in one second here. So um, and I think these are like big enough. A lot of times I'll, I'd rather put things down, like put the resin in and then push things down in, but these are, how, are gonna leave enough space. I don't think that, you know, what I, the reason I do that is I'm worried about air pockets being, you know, trapped. Um, the pressure pot can get rid of a bubble, right? It'll collapse a bubble. It can't do anything about a gap, like a, a void where there's just no resin, but it's not really like a, it's a bubble. It's just resin can't get there. So I'm always a little bit conscious about, you know, how are, you know, what are we putting in there? Or do you put it in the mold first or, or second? If possible, it's better to put things into the mold first, typically. Um, but you do have to, you know, watch out for, um, you know, air, I call them air pockets. You gotta, you gotta watch out for that air pocket stuff. Cause then you'll just have gaps. Oh man, these are gonna be so cool. Look at that. Oh, sweet. Okay, so I think we can get at least two. I should have thought about this a little bit. Uh, let me measure these because I want to make sure that we're getting, we're not just like wasting space on this. Cause like a, a bottle stopper, I usually make them about two and a quarter. I mean, we could probably even just do two inch ones. So six, yeah. I think it'd be smarter to mark this off at five. That'll give us like two and a half each. So I'm going to mark this at five inches and we're going to fill them to that, that mark. And let's see if we can like get, cause the thing is like, this will just be wasted on the top here that anything past five inches basically, cause we're not getting another one out of it. So I'm going to mark the tube there. <clears throat> And there, and I'm gonna spray this one. I don't have any more one and a half inch clear pipes. I need to add that to the list of things I need to buy. It's kind of tough though, because I have white ones. They just don't work so well for people seeing them on a stream, you know? <clears throat> All right, so we got a third tube here. I don't know how far this one's gonna go. But I'm gonna dump some of these guys out. There we go. 
don't want to waste our lifesavers, you know. Uh, I can maybe add a couple more back in there. Okay, so I think that's good. And I think we, uh, this way, we're, I think we can get at least two, four. We might, we might actually get six out of this now. Yeah, I think we'll get six um, stoppers out of these. So that's pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, where are we at here? What's happening? If they were gummy, they would have never... Oh, that's true. That is very true. Oh, that's how you bent them. Nice. Yeah, this the California Air Tools compressors are amazing also. 410 for the CA Tech, yeah. Like I said, I I'd like them. They're they're that's what I use. I love them. They're they're great pots, but I mean for most people and even me at this point, like like if the, here's the problem. So back in the day when I bought them, here were your options. You had the Harbor Freight. I had one of those and I hated it. I had actually two of them because they, they suck. <laughs> um, didn't like those too much. The, the little wing nut things are so tiny that they just, they're not fun. Um, they're hard to twist and it's just, it's not very fun. So the Harbor Freight's a kind of a, a terrible pot, but it's good. It's very cheap. That's, that's the benefit, right? Um, and then you had uh, uh, California Air Tools maybe was, I don't even know if they were actually around, if that company was actually selling pressure pots. The other one was... Um, What's that other company that makes basically the same thing as California Air Tools? I can't think of it, but it's, it's, it was similar. But what was required to convert one of those pots, because it had an agitator stick that went through the center of it, and I was like, I'm not messing with the, the conversion on this thing. It was like, how do you block that off and do all this stuff? It just, it, was, it seemed like kind of a pain. So the other option was CA Technologies, which was pretty reasonable. I think what, when I bought these, they were like 300 bucks. Eh, not bad you know that's it's it was it was doable for me and then you had binks which those things are like eight hundred dollars or something like that so i wasn't doing that um so that's why i went with these and i was very happy with them but at this point i mean you got things where you take it out of the box and it's ready to go and it's only 200 bucks tcp yeah that's that's what it's, that, that's that company i mean i'm happy i'm excited about it it's nice Yeah, you can do like the things that I just, I don't know. And then some people replace the, the nuts with like hex bolts and then like use a, like a drill. To, I think that's a terrible idea. I would worry that you're damaging. I mean, you already damage the lids on those Harbor Freight. That's the problem I have with them. Harbor Freight pots have a pin that, that like digs into the lid and dents the heck out of it. And when people are like jamming them down with a, with like, a, they use, most people are using like one of those, um, an impact driver to, <laughs> to tighten them and i'm like dude i wouldn't do that if you damage the lid i mean then you can you have a problem there so anyway let's get to the casting part how about that what do you think okay so let's see one and a half let's see those things probably take about 300 i don't know nah, that's probably too much 220 i'm gonna do a little calculating Hmm. maybe like 150 each so i'm just running through a calculation um to to do a tube to figure out how much volume and actually we we are filling it with stuff so i think 150 is probably going to work but you take pi r squared so this is an uh, inch and a half so 0.75 times 0.75 times pi 3.14 and then we're going to multiply that by five and then the the calculation is times 0.554 and then i multiply it by 29 to switch from ounces to, to um, uh, grams so this is coming up at like 140 so 150 would probably fill that to five inches so we can probably get away with even less obviously because there we this thing's full of lifesavers so let's just assume i don't want to undershoot it again so let's just assume that we're going to pour a hundred for each one i we probably don't need that much it's probably going to be way over 
but like like last time I kind of undershot I under underestimated last time so let's just go with 100 each so we're doing 300 grams total, 150 times two. 100. Arithmetic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know about the bolt method. I wouldn't do it personally. Zero, come on. So we need 150 grams of part A. Man, I cannot wait for my new pumps to come in. And it only like squirts out like the tiniest amount. Oh, these things are terrible. 150 is what we're going for. Went a little over 150.5, so I'll put a about 152 of part B in. Make sure you factor in the fun cup. I know. Yeah, I level mine too. We're getting closer. The other thing is I knew about exactly how much those other ones squirted out, the other pumps, the normal ones that I buy. And so it was a lot, like easier to sneak up on things. I was just used to them, you know. These things. Uh, okay, I went a little further over, but that's fine. Okay. We'll stir this up. We gotta add a little bit of sparkle to this one too. I love a little sparkle. I'm not a big fan of the five gallon pots. The lids are much heavier. Like for a lot of the things that I'm doing, um, cause I'm using a Lumalite white for, for a lot of the blanks that I make. I got to get these things into the pot and like pressurized in like 10 seconds. I mean, it, I, I'm moving pretty quick with that resin and I wouldn't even have time uh, to I, like, I, I never put that, the, you know, a, a blank pack of, you know, six, a mold of six blanks that I make for with the like the team color blanks that I make they're made with a lumalite white which has a two minute work I'm not joking two minute working time less in the summer and uh, I wouldn't even have enough time to get a five gallon lid on tightened and, and pressurized the other thing is a five gallon pot you have to pressurize twice as much volume you know so it takes longer to pressurize the tank too and so it just you know for most of what I do I just it wouldn't even work anyway but they work pretty good it, it's it's a good value because it allows you to do a lot of stuff you can load them full of you know if you're using a slower setting resin and you're doing like a lot of blanks um, you know you can load up a lot more and, and fit big things in so it'll do more things for a little bit more money but I think most people can get away with just using a two and a half for I mean, anything. I mean, you can fit bowl blanks in mine and, you know, I don't know. That's what I have to say about it. But if you're doing like larger, big bowls, you know, like hybrid things and all that kind of stuff, stuff like, like Doug over at Pole Barn does a lot, um, you know, you might be better off just going with a five gallon at that point. You got to just, you know, you got to buy something that's going to work for the types of projects that you're going to make. If 95% of the time you're making pen blanks, stoppers, you know, <laughs> smaller bowl blanks and things, 
then two and a half should do you fine. Okay, so let's. Uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think? Should we do a mix again, or should we just do micro, or just the chonky? Uh, the resin, this stuff only needs like a couple hours, two to four, in the pressure pot, and then you're good to go. Yak, what's up, man? Yeah, pressure pots don't, all they're doing is, is getting rid of air bubbles. It has nothing to do with curing. But if you're using a slower setting resin, you know, like Alumilite's deep pour, for something like this, you would, you'd want to leave it in there for couple days possibly sometimes certain things I don't know that I would even nece you don't necessarily need to even pressurize that but certain resins are going to take longer you know mo like liquid diamonds or amazing clear cast definitely overnight um, up to you know 8 to 24 hours for those oh we got two for just micros what did I do you didn't do anything you just do I was talking about uh pressure pots and uh you do uh like larger castings of things you do like bigger kind of bowl blanks and those types of things don't probably wouldn't fit in a two and a half gallon pot a lot of times so you know if you're doing that type of the type of, if you're doing dug type projects mostly then i think you might want to just invest in a five gallon pot off the bat if you're like, I do bowl blanks, you know, 70% of the time and pen blanks, you know, 30, then get a five gallon pot. It'll do better for you. If you do 95% pen blanks and stoppers, I don't think you need to buy a five gallon pressure pot, you know. <laughs> Use the whole jar of sparkles. You don't need to though, I mean, you know, you really don't. Okay, we're going to go with just micro on this one. I think that'll be a good one. We don't want to, you know, disrupt the the lifesavers. We don't want to block them. So, but I will give you a good a good, you know, scoop. It'll be it'll be sparkling. It'll be sparkling. Make sure I got them all mixed up. They're not clumped. I mean, that's pretty sparkling, I think. Woo-wee! Let's get under the camera. How about that? It's pretty sparkly. It's not really showing up so well on the camera, but it is It is definitely sparkling in there. Okay, so the nice thing, again, so some of you guys know that I, you know, depending on who you're following and, and what's going on, you know, you see some of us pulling out our, our temperature gauge, and we're like, oh, is it at the right temperature and doing all this stuff? That only comes into play, really, if... For, for like two in two cases if you're trying to mix two colors together you got to wait until it starts thickening up to a gel kind of state before you pour it or otherwise all those colors are just going to bleed together all right because it's going to be moving around and stuff you're waiting till it, it's at a kind of a consistency number one where the colors are not going to bleed the resin's not going to just kind of merge within itself it's going to kind of stay separated right and you'll get these color patterns the other thing about that is you're also waiting till the end of the working time so that there's only a short amount of time until it's going to turn from liquid to solid right and lock it in place so color swirls is one reason you would do temperature and weight the other one is if you're trying to suspend glitter or something like that in the resin all right, so you know, for, for these, when I'm doing these sparklies, stop bouncing. I should really mount this somewhere else uh, instead of on my desk. If I'm doing glitter in, in certain things like that, or um, another one is like the bigger chunks. Oh, I can't wait. This is something new, guys. I'm giving you a little bit of a behind the scenes sneak peek. Look at those little cactuses. What? So anyway, but you know, these kind of bigger glitter things, you got to wait until the resin's thick enough to where they're not just all going to sink. And again, you're waiting till the end of the working time so that it's going to lock it in place sooner. Um, so, but in this case, this micro starlight stuff, it ain't going anywhere. It's, it stays suspended in, in any kind of resin. Um, I don't need to wait for any special 
time. You know, we can just dump it in right away. It's not going to make any difference. So I just wanted to kind of explain that a little bit, you know. Some people might not really know. There's a reason why you wait for the magic temperature. I'm just going to kind of bop this around. Is that Steve McDonald that says that? Bop the, or boop the, boop the like button. Just kind of bouncing it around, making sure that we're getting the resin all over the place. I mixed up enough. Okay, so that's at the five inch mark again. Hopefully, hopefully we got enough. I think we got enough. There we go. That one's definitely high enough. Okay. Just gonna kind of bop it around, make sure that those any air bubbles. You're better off getting rid of as many air bubbles and stuff as possible before you put it in, even put it in the pressure pot, you know? It's it's just why not? I'm gonna go a little bit more in these guys. That one I don't even think was actually at the mark. This may drop just slightly. Wow, I really, it's a good thing I didn't go any less resin. Okay. So we got them, guys. We got three tubes. They're going to go into the pressure pot as well. And uh, one, one little tip for anybody that's kind of new to pressure pots and all this stuff. Don't ever go above the max PSI rating for your pressure pot. That's the danger zone. As long as you're staying within the limits and don't make any weird modifications and alterations to your pot, like cutting things or <laughs> welding things onto it, like, like serious modifications that you're gonna have to do plumbing in some, some cases, but you know, just putting on a, you know, some, some pots require you to like do some plumbing. The new ones that CA tech or the, the California air tools one, the two and a half that we, that I linked to that one's ready out of the box, but um, don't make modifications weird modifications to your pot or uh, go above the max PSI rating and your pot should say what the highest amount of PSI you can go in. Um, but these things, you know, the problem is if anything fails on these things, they turn into, they can kind of blow up. Um, but that's not going to, I don't know of any one person that that's happened to that wasn't jacking around with modifying something on the lid like welding stuff to it and doing, you know, weird modifications or they were just exceeding like, you know, the, the max PSI. So for mine, the CA technologies, that's not to can be not to be confused with. And I don't know what the, the max is on, on. I think the max is the same on them, but mine say do not exceed a little big sticker. Do not exceed working pressure of 80 PSI. I don't. I actually don't even go over 70 in mine. There's really no reason to. Um, but you know if it says max psi is like 50 don't go above that and you should you'll be fine you know the fun cup uses i know i didn't even actually get to pour anything in there this time yeah 50 is fine uh but my only thing is so i like 70 i like i like being above here's the reason i like it the minimum is 40 okay but the problem is most pressure pots are not 100 percent sealed right so for alumilite clear slow i'm probably not unless unless you got a massive leak you know that you can audibly hear most likely it's probably not going to lose enough pressure to drop below 40. and i would actually say 45 is really kind of the safe zone but you know you don't want to go below 40. 
So, you know, within a couple hours, I'm probably not going to lose that much pressure. Okay, if I went to like 50, it's probably not going to drop 10 PSI. If you're using a resin, like, um, like Ahmed, Ahmed is talking about like a, you know, 20 hours in a pressure pot. I mean, if it's not fully sealed up, like it's going to drop a lot. So I like to go a little bit higher in mine and it just gives me a little bit more breathing room in case a leak that I don't know about happens. That's, that's one of the main reasons I do that. Higher pressure, probably not gonna really do anything different. I, I, there's no difference between 50 and 70, I don't think, on, on any of your castings. Um, but when I was using my Harbor Freight, I, I really think that 50 is the minimum that I would recommend, as long as your pot can go there. Um, 50 is a good number. Um, it just, it gives you a little bit of a cushion between 40 and 50. Um, most pots, unless you got a massive leak, are not going to drop 10 psi. That's that's a pretty big leak that that should be very easy to fix, you know. So, 70. Yeah, I go to 70. My my thing is, I just kind of looked at it like, okay, well, if the max is 80, I, I like to even give myself a little buffer. I just say, okay, I'm going to be 10 below whatever the max is. Um, I think for CA Technologies, these are pretty high quality pots. There's a reason they're $400. They're made with extremely good materials, high quality, you know, all in quality controls. Um, I think that when it says the working pressure of 80 PSI, that means like working pressure, not like the absolute max. That's like the working pressure of this. So I could repeatedly do this. For me, I, I'm using these things like all the time, like all day. They're, I'm standing by them and they're pressurized, right? And I'm just thinking, you know, after years of use, if you're constantly going to the max in the pot, and I don't know, I, this is just an assumption. This is just kind of like a, I, I try to play on the safe side of things. If you're constantly pushing it to the limits, then that may eventually degrade some of the materials, maybe. Um, so I usually just stay 10 PSI below whatever the max is in any pot that I'm using. And I don't have to worry about, you know, over exceeding anything over time. The other thing is, what if your gauge were off for some reason? It's highly unlikely, but, you know, it's again, I, I, I like to just, I got room to play. So there's no reason for me to go to 80 every single time. It's not going to do anything different. So these are just a couple thoughts. You, I'm not saying you have to do this. Um, I'm not even necessarily recommending it or anything. It's just that's how I do it, you know. Um, and I just wanted to explain like why, <laughs> why I do that. What are my philosophies on all this stuff? Okay, so the third and final casting of the day. We're doing pretty good today, I think. So we're gonna do pipes or, you know, uh, PVC pipe, three quarter inch. Let's see here, I don't really need that long. One. Yeah, that ought to, that'll be plenty. Let's see if I can find another one about the same size. Is that the same size? No. That's good. Okay. Uh, actually, I might. I think I'm going to go with the longer ones. I think the longer ones are the way to go. Then I don't have to squeeze anything in. Okay, so, uh, and one thing that I, I forgot to mention on the last one, I got a link to all this good stuff. So most of you guys know at this point, but I wanted to share if you were like, oh, where'd you get those like really handy things that plug the tubes? These are at Turner's Warehouse. And they are the greatest things ever. They even have a little center point that, that you get on the, on the bottom there. So let me go and get a, a link to this and I'll put one down in the show notes later for people. Hold on a minute, hold on. And it's really cool because they got them from like, I want to say like minimum like half inch. Yeah, half inch all the way up to four inch. And they even have PVC pipes. They even have clear now huh i guess maybe only in four inch but wow i did not even i mean chad i gotta i gotta chad needs to tell me what's going on over there they're always doing cool stuff is that the right thing 
this oh that's a terrible uh, okay so so here's the link to the little uh, silicone doohickeys they are awesome pick some up so realistically how long does the pressure pot matter for bubbles you got to leave it in there until it's ready <laughs> if you pull it too soon so here's what happens if the resin hasn't if the resin hasn't sat i can't talk if the resin hasn't set up fully like it's not and this is very difficult to explain i think um we're talk we're kind of splitting hairs a little bit here but i mean it needs to get into a, a solid state let's just say uh, not like kind of a squishy state all right so what happens is if what, what happens when you pressurize it the bubble shrinks it it's collapsing it making it like microscopic or so it's debatable if it's truly microscopic or not but the, the point is you can't see it and it's not going to show up and it, it does it's small enough where it's not going to like it's it doesn't affect the clarity like you can't see it you know in the resulting casting all right i'm spraying these uh these pvc pipes with stoner by the way right now um so it collapses it down now if you pull it before the resin has turned solid fully like hard solid enough um what's going to happen is those bubbles just grow right back you know you, you increase the pressure and it collapses it you decrease the pressure and they come back and it's also the same idea as um, vacuum if you put something under vacuum what it's doing is it's expanding air bubbles rather than collapsing them right because you're, you're taking you're lowering the pressure basically okay so if you pull it too soon they're just going to come right back and it's going to look like a sponge cake um, so you want to wait long enough now with alumilite clear slow you know in like room temperature conditions and a reasonable amount of resin 100 grams or so i mean really within an hour or two it's going to be hard enough for sure um, alumilite clear the, like the regular version that stuff is probably good to go in like 30 minutes for epoxies it depends you know it, it could be eight hours it could be 24 just kind of you'll, you'll have to know for the most part overnight seems to be fine for liquid diamonds amazing clear cast and just about any other epoxy that i've ever used all right i'm going to take these gloves off and get a fresh pair because i was spraying that stoner um, with the gloves on and i don't want to get it all over my um you know the little the little uh, whatever these are cylinders <clears throat> Well, you can go to whatever PSI you want, as long as your pot can hold, handle it. The big thing is, if there's damage to the pot, that's that's what I was getting at with with kind of the max and all that stuff. I I think that you know you're just gonna wear if you're gonna be doing cat lots of castings over and over. Just the <laughs> it just makes sense that if you're constantly going to the the top, you know, maxing it out every single time, it's gonna wear faster over in it but i the thing is i don't know any single person who's worn out a pressure pot even you know i know people that have been casting for 20 years with the same harbor freight pressure pot so i you know I, i'm just overly cautious with a lot of this stuff but i can be because i can do whatever i want you know in my shop um but i just want to let you guys know what what the point why why i do certain things like that look at this oh i don't know if it's gonna work it's not big enough it's not gonna work guys it doesn't work out to be the right amount of room i don't think in fact i don't even think we actually need to put a center piece in because it just the way that this the way the dimensions work there's just kind of a, a hole in the center but they're all on the outside which is pretty much perfect so we're not even wasting <laughs> we don't even have to waste a, a pipe Look at that. Sweet. And so it takes 
five. Okay, we can make one more. I'm gonna have to like unbend this, <laughs> this one. I'm gonna put this back in the, the oven <laughs> for a little bit and try to get it unbent <laughs> while I get another pipe ready. Yeah, the pencil doesn't doesn't fit. It doesn't work out correctly with the size. So that's cool. We don't even have to mess with it. Dang it, I'm gonna have to get another pair of gloves out. Another thing you could do, I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit. I, I would recommend, because I don't really wanna waste another pair of gloves. Um, typically I would recommend taking your gloves off if you do that, but, <clears throat> If you if you just did that, so there, there's probably stoner on this. I don't want to be handling these things. One thing you can do is use a little bit of acetone or, or denatured alcohol and just wipe your fingers off with that. That should get most of that stoner off of your, your fingers. You, know, you want to be wearing gloves when, if you do this, but just kind of wipe it off, and that should get most of that stuff off of there. So I don't have to waste another pair. Mark's asking, what is the oh, inside diameter of clear? Um, I actually, I don't know. I don't think it's actually, it probably isn't three quarter. It's probably a little bit bigger. I don't, I mean, it's probably whatever the standard is, you know. But I don't know. Um, seven, so we're at 820, whatever that is. So it's it's a it's oversized, so 0 0.820. So three quarter would be 0 0.75, and we're at 0 0.820, which is what is that? Eight two. I don't know, somewhere around 13 sixteenths or so. So I didn't even have this thing in there that long and it's already pliable. That ought to probably be good enough. This one was a little bit bent too. I was kind of playing around with bending them. All right, so let's see if we can get these guys in here. We got two whites, you know. Let's uh, let's do a little bit of. Um, we got two reds in this one, so we're gonna do a little bit of swappage. Okay, doing a little bit of swap. And that white one's still just a little bit. We're okay. Just push it down in there. Okay, so we got three, three pipes. Um, and I have a little rack that I made. It's it's super fancy. <laughs> that way the pipes don't fall over. I wish they would, uh, I really want uh, Turner's Warehouse to come out with a rack thing, you know, for, for your tubes. I don't think they have one right now. Maybe, maybe they do, I don't know. I would like a, a nice round one that has like, you know, holds like 10 or 20 pipes. That would be nice. Okay, so we got our rack ready. We got some pins. So are we gonna go with clear again? Is that what we said? 2.30 a.m., oh man. Have a good one. Phone call. Oh man, Frank, we're you missed everything. 
I'm just I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think he missed anything. Metric system, what's that? I've never heard of it. Well, so here's the thing. I mean, we could go with like black. That might be kind of interesting. I think we have a black um, thing though. So it's just tough, you know, you can add color, but let's, let's try silver. What do you guys think about silver? You know, like, like going with like a metallic, that, that seems like kind of, that might not be a bad way to go. And silver's light, so it's not really gonna take over. You know, what do you guys think about that idea? Well, the problem is like we have white in there. I mean, this one doesn't actually have black in it. Um, but these two do have black, you know, like so we could do like black and then white in this one, I guess, and then silver. This one has black and white. I mean, we could do that, I guess. I think it makes more sense just to go for, let's just go for silver and just see how that goes. I, I think it'll be, I think that's going to actually be kind of the, the most interesting way to go. I'm just trying to think how, you know, because we already have the colors in there. I'm trying to think how this would look with like black around those things. And I just don't know. I guess it'll just have division lines between there, but you're adding just like another color that kind of diminishes the, the colors that are in there, you know? Oh yeah, the starlight, that's actually, if you guys want one of the coolest things, this, the micro starlight, I, I actually like, this is not, I don't think exactly what, what you were talking about. Micro starlight, load it up and put it in black and it looks like space, the final frontier. It's so cool. Okay, so let's do a little bit. Are you, so Jen, are you thinking like the chonky starlight with silver? That would be pretty cool actually, I think. Chonky. All right, Resin Dragon, have a good night. Yeah, well, I don't see the thing is, I don't, uh, we've already done clear. I don't really want to do clear on these. We've got a lot, plenty of, plenty of things that are going to be clear. So let's do silver and then some starlight. Chunky. Let's do it. Okay, we're doing it, guys. We are so doing it. Okay. So I don't know how much these hold, like mm, probably like 50 grams each, maybe. I don't think it's gonna be. Let's just do 50. Mm. I think a full tube would probably be like 90, wouldn't it? Is that right? No, I guess that's not right at all. Maybe 70. Let's see. Let's do some calculating. We need to overshoot it though quite a bit because it's 0.82. So what's that? 0.82 divided by 2. 0.41 times. Uh, this is why. I, this is probably why I always screw up pen blank ones because I'm I'm using three quarter inch instead of 0.82 times 3.14 times six or so times 0.554 times 29. Yeah, so 50, 51, okay. Doesn't seem right, but let's just estimate 50 and see how this goes. Actually, so how, here's our, here's our overpour. So the only problem with the overpour cup is we're using Illumilite clear, slow, and you have to pressurize it or else you're gonna get bubbles in it. So all of these like fun cups are, they're gonna be bubble fun cups, but Let's, uh, let's overshoot it and add a little bit more to our fun cup. What do you think? So I'm just gonna estimate 70 for each and then, so 210 and we should have extra and it should be fun. So one, let's see, what did I say? Two, three times, yeah, 210, 105, 105 grams of part A. Mm. 
105 is what the number I'm shooting for here. We're getting closer here. cup I know it's fun uh, I went a little further over 106 so we'll do 106 again Should have used the bigger cup. What was I thinking? Okay, perfect. Yeah, this will, this cup will do. This cup will do. It's okay. Oh, I'm spilling it all over. I was I was reading the, the comments, and I'm spilling the resin all over the place. Because my cup's too small. Jeez. That's what I get. That's what I get for trying to read comments and mix resin. Spilling it all over the place. Now, oh, for goodness sakes, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, guys. Okay, I'm going to pay attention to the cup this time. Not whip it so good. Ah, oh, this sucks. Eh. Yep, the cup's too small. Use the appropriate cup, guys. It's just better. Devo it. I know. I was whipping it good. Yeah. I was whipping it too good. Okay, just for Jen, we are going to load this up with the chonky and the silver. So I'm, I'm going to use the Alumalite's uh, silver. Actually, sorry, they don't even sell it anymore. I, this stuff is its like a makeup the brand is m-e-h-r-o-n i found it on amazon i'll have to get the link um it's it's a really you know if you're going for like silver like really silver this stuff rocks so let's go for um i think an eighth teaspoon might might do it for this amount of resin i don't know let's let's go with a quarter quarter teaspoon Usually I would write notes down, but I can come back to the thing. I, I think I can remember even. And then we are just going to dump some starlight in. Two scoops. Oh, man. Let's see how that looks. Don't spill it. I'm not going to whip it. In fact, I'm going to move the glitter because I'll probably get resin in it. Move the stuff out of the way. Oh man, silvery glitter. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Dump all the glitter. No, I want to. You don't need to, you know? You just don't need to. But I do think that we need at least like one more. One more big scoop. Let's put another big scoop in. It's just wasting the glitter, I think, you know? You don't want to waste it. I don't know. We could probably even put some more. What do you think? Let's just, let's go for it. We're going to put like half this thing in there at least. Okay. 
I'm just curious to see if there's really any difference here. I like that. That's like disco ball. <laughs> I think if we added the whole jar, I don't really think it's going to do a whole lot different because this isn't really that much different than the other one. I think that'll be good. What do you think? There is no waste. Yeah, it's good. Oh, man, I spilled it. Dang it. Don't use two small cups. It really sucks. Okay, let's do a little bit more just because... Just because I want to see what it looks like. Let's let's do this. Okay, we're going to dump it all in. We're doing it. I'm doing it for you, Jen. Now I have no more starlight. Oh, man. Let's see what we got. I don't even know if it's going to pour into the thing at this point. I don't think I've ever had that much starlight to anything, ever. What do you think of that? Now that is bling. Bling, bling. I did it. I did it. I know. I was actually thinking about doing that, but I wanted to like lead you guys on. Actually, part of the thing was I wanted to see if there was really any difference as I went, you know? And then also play a little bit of koi. Be like, hey, I don't think so. That's too much. Okay. That's going to be pretty sweet. So here we go. Are you guys ready to dump? Who's ready to dump? Oh. Gonna have to slow my roll. <laughs> gonna have to slow. I think I'm gonna pour it into a pla uh, paper cup also. Where did, where did the little, oh, there there. I think I'm gonna pour it in a paper cup because I can squeeze it and Things will just be a little bit better, I think. I don't want to waste any of these sparkles. I'm trying to get as much as I can out of the cup. Okay. Now I can do this get a smaller stream going in there we got the chunk going here these are fun so all the mystery box people you gotta thank Jen for the idea of dumping the whole jar in there Well, three three of you anyway. <laughs> Frank uh, Frank is a mystery box person, right? I think Frank has to get one of one of these for sure. Okay, so I just want to make sure that uh, there's that it's not bubbling and, and you know, we're, there's no pockets of air in here kind of thing. So I'm going to kind of tap these around. Because what, what could happen is if there's like little bubbles or air pockets, and I can actually see more bubbles going up the side of this. So we want to kind of give these a little bit of time so what would happen is if there's bubbles in here a lot of them bigger ones then what's going to happen is the level is going to drop significantly uh, so we want to make sure that we don't you know drop it too far down so i'm just looking to see is there any more bubbles rising up that i can see doesn't look like it at this point maybe one right there 
some bubbles are just, you're going to have some bubbles, but what, what I'm talking about is big ones. So that one looks pretty good. I don't see any bubbles or anything going on. What, what I can notice is there's, there's like a totally clear area here and there. That means that there's like an air bubble because there should be no clear anything in there in the middle of the silver. I don't even know if you can really identify the silver at this point. It's all sparkles. That's fun. Okay, so I'm just going to top these off to make sure that, again, for the, for the amount. We got enough for another pen blank. I think we need to just make one of these for Jen and send it. There's definitely enough. So we're going to make another pen blank here. Um, but I'm going to write on this that it says what it is. I'm just going to write Jen <laughs> on a tube. Get a little stoner going. And a little plug. Yes. All right, there we go. See, this one's for Jen. She deserves a pen blank for all the hard work moderating you crazy group of people. You gotta watch out for those rascals look at that and we even have some left over for fun cup oh man fun cup i'm actually going to pour it kind of around the fun cup we'll get some bling on the outside of some other things too maybe look at that if that ain't a fun cup i don't know what is okay so we got that finished. We got three pen blanks that are going to go to mystery box. We got a gen pen blank and we are popping this guy into the pressure pot right now. And we're going to double check. Did you guys see Jake forgot to pressurize one of his blanks or one, you know, one of his pots <laughs> that happened to me a few, few times. I was just looking to see if I, if I had forgotten one of the ones. It's so easy, you know, you get sidetracked. You're talking about sparkles. And... All right, there we go. Whew, those are fun. So real quick, I'm gonna wipe down my fun cup. I know, I know. Yeah, the stoner, I'm telling you. Okay, so I wiped off that thing. I don't have any silver on it anymore. I'm gonna close, oh, I got some glitter in my silver. Get this thing unhooked. Put away the silver and the starlight. So I'll go through and I'll try to find, um, for anybody that's watching after the fact, or if you guys wanna come back to it, what I'm gonna do is uh, go get the links to all the stuff that I use, like the the, the little plugs, the little silicone plugs, the the two and a half gallon pot. What else? Starlight glitter, micro starlight glitter. And I already have a link to the, the pine cone blanks. Um, so for anybody that wasn't here when I mentioned it before, uh, my pine cone blanks, the mini pine cone blanks, whoa, are on sale right now, seriously. And so let's see here, pine cones. So here's the link. And what you do is you're gonna, when you check out, you will type in the words, spring sale, all like no space or anything. Where are we at here? So spring sale, spring sale. So those are on 15% off right now. Um, and for, they're gonna go for like five days or six, something like that, seven, less than a week, I think. 
Uh, so those guys are on sale. Let's see, is there anything else that's happening? I got those things. Two and a half gallon pressure pot. I think that's it. So I'll try and get all the links down in the show notes below for, like I said, if you want to reference this and go back, just go to the description, grab the link. Um, there, I think most of those are probably going to be um, affiliate links. So you are also supporting the show using my links. So I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else that I can mention? There's going to be a video coming this weekend. I'm very excited about it. And I actually, if you guys can share this video, I would really appreciate it. Um, it's it's uh, that air filter that I was talking about. And I want to get the word out. I really love this air filter in my shop. It's going to be kind of a little promo video for that. So I really appreciate if anybody watches that, if, if and only if it's worth sharing with, you know, a group or, you know, people, somebody that's that's looking for a filter, you know, don't spam people with it, but, you know, get, get it out there and share with people that you might know. I would really appreciate that. It'd be awesome. So uh, be looking for that. It'll go up on Sunday. And I, I think it might actually even come out earlier than that. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm working on two videos at the same time, but bare minimum, it's going to be Sunday for that air filter video. So let's see here. Oh, nice. 420, vi yeah. I know it's kind of crazy. Some of the, when you look at some people's videos that are like the, the most popular. Hmm. All right, so I think that's about, yeah, a little glitter sparkles can sidetrack anybody. It is true. Uh, so I appreciate all the super chatters. Thank you guys for helping support the show, dropping some super chats. Uh, thank you guys all for joining the fun tonight. Um, real quick, last call if anybody has any burning questions uh, to ask before I go. Um, when I send the mystery boxes out, read this chat first. Uh, I can't read every the whole every chat. What 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 what, what, what are we reading here, Gene? <laughs> this chat. I don't know what that means. Did I miss something? Oh, twisty sticks instead of the mess. What's the mess? Twisty sticks and stuff. Oh, the, the lifesavers? Is that what you mean? Uh, what was Jim's request? Okay, Jim likes lifesavers. So I, here's what I would do. Jim and Gene, if you have a request, email it to me. Don't Not, not a chat or a message or anything send me an email uh, to my thing so that I, I can remember it just to make sure just because because I'm not going to remember this <laughs> they're going out in like two weeks I think so let's see here is everybody let's see uh, cool best day ever sweet yeah, and I'll get I'll have that thing sent out to you, uh, Jen. Uh, once we get it all demolded, so on Saturday I'm gonna turn something up out of this. It kind of sucks because there's not enough for for everybody for the mystery boxes. What do we do? Three, six, plus two, four, six, twelve. Well, there's enough. There's enough. So I think what I might do is actually turn one of the. I might turn one of the lifesavers, I think. I don't know. Um, I'll have to kind of think about it and see which one, which, which, which direction to go on that. I think it'd be kind of fun to turn one of those lifesavers. I was kind of eyeing those things. So on Saturday, we'll turn one of these guys up and see what they look like, and it should be pretty fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Big thank you to Frank for sending all this good stuff in. Uh, I mean, it obviously it provided a couple of hours of fun uh, for everybody, I think. So I appreciate it, Frank. It's not a mystery if we get all the castings anyway. Well, that's true. This month, though, there is a mystery in there, Gene. There is a mystery. You're not going to know what one of them. I, the mystery wasn't. The mystery was going to be at least half were going to be blanks that we made on the stream anyway. The mystery was there would be some extras dribbled in there. So, 
Anyway, guys, thank you again for joining the fun tonight. I will see you guys all on Saturday. That's at noon Pacific time. So don't forget that a little bit earlier on Saturday. And we'll turn one of these guys up. So I can't wait. So again, have a great night, guys. And I will see you on the next stream.